Are you an alcoholic? Let's find out. Now, if you would have asked me 10 years ago what an alcoholic was versus today, my answers would be very different. But I think a typical understanding of what an alcoholic is is very misunderstood. It's a pretty misunderstood topic, and I think it just leaves a lot of people feeling really uncomfortable. They don't know how to act. They don't know what's okay, what's not okay. They don't want to offend anybody. It's just a very touchy subject. But what makes somebody an alcoholic? It's somebody that drinks too much. Somebody that can't handle their booze. Maybe it's just somebody who is just out of control. I don't know, completely out of control. When I used to think of somebody who was an alcoholic, I would usually think of somebody who typically had completely lost control of their life. Typically, you think of somebody who's either homeless, jobless, struggling in some way. But that's not always the case. I would be a perfect testament to that. I feel like I was fully in control of my life. At least I felt like I was, but things were slowly spiraling out of control in terms of my addiction. So you can have your life put together and still have a problem, a struggle with alcohol. I feel like one of the biggest challenges for someone struggling with alcoholism, aside from the actual struggle itself, is the stigma behind it. It deters people from even wanting to embark on a journey of sobriety because the stigma behind sobriety is just mostly negative. At least in my opinion, people don't know how to act around a sober person. People don't understand sobriety, why somebody would want to get sober. People assume the worst in people with sobriety. They just assume that they're completely lost. They've got tons of problems and they only had one option and that was to let go of alcohol or whatever drug they're using. And usually people don't have very good opinions about addicts. They are untrustworthy. They're not somebody that you can depend on. They're usually people that you're not going to invite to bring around. If you have family or friends that you're bringing around, you're not going to invite those types of people around. So I feel like the stigma behind people who struggle with alcoholism is mostly bad, even though most of the people, if not all of the people that I know who are in recovery or struggling, they're all great people. They just have a struggle. They have an addiction and addiction can affect anybody. So I think in covering the topic of what makes you an alcoholic, I think the other thing that I want to cover is kind of that stigma behind alcoholism. And I want to kind of, I want to change minds. I want people to realize that people who struggle with addiction are not bad people and people in recovery are some of the most amazingly disciplined, strong, trusting, giving, just emotionally aware individuals out there because they've put in the work to be this way. It doesn't just happen. It's something they've put in the work to relearn these skills. Getting sober doesn't mean that you're going to be lame. It doesn't mean that you're not going to be a trustworthy person. It doesn't mean that you're going to be a loser. It doesn't mean any of these things. Getting sober just means that you're letting go of something that no longer serves you in life. It no longer has a purpose for you in life other than bringing you down when you're trying to get up. So let's dive into what I would consider are the five biggest things that will identify you as an alcoholic. Stay tuned till the end because I'm going to go over what clued me into my issues because I'm going to go through my personal story and how I figured out that I'm an alcoholic. Now, you may hit all five of these things. You may hit none of these things. These are all just things from my personal experience. I was thinking back on how I was and who I was during the depths of my depraved drinking days. And these are some things that I came up with that I think resoundingly for most addicts are going to be true. The only person in the entire world who can tell you that you are an alcoholic, unfortunately, is going to be you. So it's going to be up to you to figure out if these things apply to you. And not only do they apply to you, but do you think that it is reason for you to believe you have a problem? It takes intense amounts of honesty with yourself to really arrive at an honest conclusion about this. You have to put all of your ego aside. You have to put all of your emotions aside. And you have to truly sit down and think about, 
do I fit into these boxes or do I not fit into these boxes? So just some things to think about as we go through these next five things. All right, coming in at number five, I would say if other people are telling you that you might have a problem, then that's a fairly good indication that you may have a problem. It's not always 100% fact because other people don't know you. They don't know your experience. They don't know how you experience alcohol. And like as a former drinker, I know that tolerance exists. I know that I could drink more than my friends could. I could drink way more than my partner could. Like, you know, the amount that you can drink doesn't necessarily make you an alcoholic. But other people telling you that they think you might have a problem is usually a good indication that you might have a problem. The hard part with that is that you're not going to usually listen to those people because you don't want to believe that you have a problem, number one. Number two, you're going to make excuses as to why you don't think that it is a problem or why you feel justified in drinking or using your drug of choice so much. You can either accept the honesty that your friends and family are giving you and you can accept what they're saying and take it and really analyze it for yourself and see, do I really have a problem or not? Uh, But that's usually the first clue. That was the first clue with me. I had multiple people in my friend and family circle telling me, not all the time, but frequently enough that I knew that they thought that I had a problem with drinking. I was the last person to find out that I had an alcohol problem. Number four, can you pick it up and put it down whenever you want? Do you take long breaks between drinking or is it a regular thing? Do you drink multiple nights a week? Do you drink every day? When somebody says, okay, cool, so starting tomorrow, you're no longer going to be drinking at least for the next 30 days. Does that thought make you feel like that's an easy task or is that something that you would find to be quite challenging? Knowing what I know now, I was drinking every day. It would start out slow. It started out real slow. I would drink one day, then it'd be three days, then it'd be five days, then it was every day during the week. So I think the amount that you're drinking, I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean that for everybody. Sometimes you're only having a couple drinks and you're not getting super plastered. But at, th- at that point, what is the point of having those couple drinks? Is it really relaxing you? Is it really truly doing something for you? Or is it just something that's become a habit because you've done it for so long? The thing with habits is that it only takes three days to build a habit, but it takes 21 days to break a habit. So you might form these habits really quickly and not even realize that they've become habits going on autopilot it's not something you're consciously doing and that's the the craziest part about addiction is it seems to sneak up on you at one point you're laughing having a great time doing these drugs drinking partying next thing you know you're just in a really rough spot it's one of those things that creeps up on you and you've got to be very conscious and mentally aware of what's going on knowing whether or not you can pick it up or put it down or have these periods of sobriety in between your drinking that's going to be a big clue as to whether or not you're starting to form these, these habitual alcoholic tendencies where you are now doing it, not even realizing that it's slowly going to become more and more of a problem. But another thing that people don't realize is how addictive, how truly addictive and dependent forming alcohol is. I believe alcohol came in just under two on the scale, but alcohol is within the top five most addictive substances. Uh, in terms of psychoactive substances and illicit drugs. And people don't necessarily think about that very often because of how prevalent, how easily accessible, and how socially acceptable alcohol is. But it is highly, highly addictive. And not only that, but it is super dependent for me. So not only will you get addicted to it, but then your body needs it to stay, you know, to function, essentially. You can get delirium tremor, delirious tremor, tremens, something like that which is uh, like a withdrawal from alcohol syndrome. I had a friend tell me that her dad actually died because he had to do a routine surgery and had to quit drinking for three days. Didn't realize that quitting drinking was going to send his body into complete shock, and he died. So this highly addictive substance not only comes with this intense addictive nature to it, but it's also highly dependent forming to where your body needs it. So you might not think that you have a drinking problem because you don't drink to, to where you're blacking out every night, but you might be drinking daily to where your body is now becoming dependent on that substance, and it is now needing that substance in order to function properly. Even if it's only a couple or three drinks per day that you're having, your body still might be suffering negative consequences the next day or when you're not drinking because of it. So then you have to continue drinking in order to maintain that normal bodily function or to feel normal, but that's not normal.
Your body shouldn't need something to survive other than oxygen, food, and water. Now, number three, this is a big one. Is alcohol or whatever drug you're using ruining things in your life? Is it starting to cause problems in your relationships? Are you finding yourself in legal trouble? Are you finding yourself in trouble at work? Maybe you're finding yourself less uh, productive at work, or maybe you're finding yourself less successful at work in terms of like making sales or finding leads or whatever your job is. Maybe you're just not being as productive and you're not being as functional as you used to be. For me, it was my relationships that were suffering the most. And I think for most people, that tends to be what suffers the most because people get sick of dealing with your, you know, tendencies. They get sick of dealing with your alcoholism or your addiction issues. And they get sick of dealing with you in general. So eventually your relationships take a turn and you're not able to manage it as well because you're not clear headed. You're not there mentally. You go through these waves of chemical imbalances of sobering up and getting drunk again. And the chemicals are constantly up and down in your brain to where it almost makes it impossible for you to emotionally figure out what's happening. Until you let go of whatever substance you're on, your brain is going to be so just chemically bogged down with bullshit And you have to give your brain a little bit of of grace and it needs some time to clear itself out and it needs some time to rebalance so that you can start to think about things normally, think about things rationally, think about things in a healthy perspective and kind of use your emotions to help you guide guide those thoughts and those, those feelings. I feel like as soon as you allow your substance of choice, be it alcohol or drugs, whatever, as soon as it starts to be taking things from your life as opposed to adding or, you know, partying, having fun is probably the best use for substances, I'd say, that doesn't really involve getting hooked on them. But as soon as it starts taking more than it's actually adding to your life, that's when you have to start to reevaluate. Is this thing serving me the way I need it to serve me any longer? For me, alcohol five years ago was taking everything from me and giving me uh, basically personal satisfaction, personal gratification of those urges, just satisfying my own ego's need to drink. I don't know what, I honestly don't know why I was drinking and holding on to it so hard. I, re- I, I couldn't tell you now why. Back then I had every reason why, but now I have no idea why. But I'll tell you right now, it was definitely taking more than it was giving me. And I hit that point where I realized if I don't stop, it's going to take everything from me and I'm going to have nothing left to even fight for. So if it starts to take things from you, if it starts to cause problems, if it starts to affect your relationships, your mental health, your ability to hold down your regular life routines, then I highly recommend reevaluating your decisions to keep using it or at least try and limit how much you are using it so that you're using it more healthily you're taking breaks between using it. You're allowing your brain to balance back out. You're using it in moderation. Everything should be used in moderation. The law of diminishing return. Moving on down to number two. This this is a big one. Uh, number two is a real big one. Are you hiding your drug usage or your alcohol drinking usage? Because if you're hiding it, what are you hiding it for? That's my question. Why are you hiding it? Why do you have to hide it from people if it's totally normal and acceptable and you don't exhibit problems or uh, signs of alcoholism? Why are you hiding it? If you're hiding it, you're definitely showing signs of uh, an addiction problem. That is like one of the number one signs. If you're hiding how much you're drinking from people, if you're drinking before you go out to drink with other people so that you can get that buzz, attain that level of a buzz that you're you're used to. If you just have to do everything with some alcohol or drugs in your system, if you can't do anything without having gotten drunk or high beforehand and you have to hide your usage of it, you're, you're doing it before you go to do something, but you're not telling anybody about it. You're just kind of doing it on your own and hoping that nobody realizes that you are, which most people won't. I mean, honestly, they won't. You're probably getting really good at hiding it. And that's the thing is that the only person you can't hide it from is yourself. You can hide it from everybody else as long as you want, but you can't hide from yourself. If you're hiding it, what are you hiding it from? Who are you hiding it from? Why are you hiding it? If it's normal and you don't think you have a problem, then why are you hiding it? That's all I got to say about that. 
and this is the last one. This one was kind of like the big one for me. And I think that this is probably true for most addicts uh, in terms of the idea of getting sober is does it scare you? Does getting sober and letting go of whatever your substance is, does it scare you to let that shit go? Are you nervous when you think about letting it go? Are you nervous that life won't be the same? Are you scared that you'll be lame or you won't have fun or you won't be able to do it? I don't know. There's so much fear going into sobriety. But for someone who doesn't struggle with an addiction, somebody telling them that they need to let go of a substance or not do a substance, it's not going to trigger them as much as it's going to trigger somebody who does struggle with a substance abuse issue. Uh, if you told me five years ago that I needed to give up drinking, I would make every excuse in the book as to why I deserve to drink. I'm an adult now. I am... I. It's a privilege for me to drink. I work hard. I've earned the right to drink. But at the end of the day, that was just me making up excuses as to why I was too scared to try and embark upon a sober journey and too scared to admit that I had a problem, too scared to own my problem, and too scared to figure out if I could find help for this problem, which there is so much help out there. There's literally endless amounts of help. There's rehab facilities, there's online meetings, there's in-person meetings every single hour of every single day all over your city through AA. There's Narcotics Anonymous. There's literally so many different help groups. There's a personal therapist. That was a big one for me. So there are avenues and there are things that you can, you can reach out to to get sober. But for most people str struggling with addiction, it's such a scary thought living without that substance that it's almost debilitating. It's debilitating to the point that you revert back to using your substance and you say, no, nah, I'm good. I'm just going to keep doing it. And you find reasons to justify your continued use. But 100%, if it scares you to let go of your substance, of drinking, of drugs, or anything else, then I would say that is one, the number one reason that would clue you in to the fact that you may be struggling with an addiction problem. And you may need help, and that's okay. That's totally fine. We all need help sometimes. And not only that, but addiction affects a lot more people than you think. Way more people than you think. You're not alone. And if it scares you to think about getting sober, don't let it scare you. Let it excite you. Because just know all the sadness and difficulty and struggle that you've been going through over the last year or more is going to be completely reversed it's going to be completely changed it's going to be completely it's going to completely 180 for you once you choose to get sober you'll be able to see things clearly and you'll look back at those feelings in that person and you'll wonder who that even was and why were they so stuck and hung up on this substance of this lifestyle of this struggle now, as promised, I want to let you guys know how I figured out that I was an alcoholic. Now, for me, my story is a little different. I did exhibit all five of those symptoms. All five of those things were struggles that I had and were clues to the problem that I was struggling with. The thing that really clued me into my alcohol addiction, though, however, was coming out of a blacked out state to a shit storm of a situation in which I was being arrested and charged with domestic violence and child abuse and found myself in a cell for multiple days after that. It was sitting in that said cell that I realized I never once in my 29 years of life thought I would ever find myself in a jail cell. Never. So finding myself in a jail cell for multiple days realizing it was due to my need to keep drinking and my inability to quit drinking, I found myself in jail. How did I find myself in a jail cell? Well, I'll share it with you. So we had just had our son. It had been about three months, and Kim was going to be going back to work for the first time since being on maternity leave and giving birth. And I had not been drinking up until this point because I had told Kim I would quit drinking. I'd slow down on all that. I would be responsible and focus on our baby and focus on being a dad. But she was going back to work for the first time, and I saw it as an opportunity because she wasn't going to be home. There wasn't going to be anybody there to tell me not to drink. I could get away with it. I knew I could get away with it. 
So I went down and I had a bottle and it was hidden and I've been keeping it safe for a while for a special day. And this just happened to be that special day, I guess. But I was supposed to be watching my three month old son. I got too drunk. I tried to feed him, was unsuccessful because I was just drunk and couldn't figure it out. And he was used to breastfeeding and I was trying to feed him with a bottle, but I didn't care. I was just too drunk and couldn't figure it out and figured maybe he just needed to sleep, was not thinking clearly. So instead of finishing feeding him or trying to get him to eat, I put him down for a nap, tried to get him to sleep. He basically cried himself to sleep for maybe 30 minutes, 45 minutes. It was a while, but I'm not really 100% sure how long because I was obliterated, completely super drunk. Played some video games and then eventually blacked out after he had fallen asleep and then woke up on the toilet to Kim coming home wondering what the fuck is happening and why is Bodhi not waking up. My son wasn't waking up in his little pack and play. She was super worried about him. She wasn't sure if he was breathing or not. And here I am, passed out on the toilet, not even understanding what's going on. And she immediately knew I was drunk, immediately. And a fight ensued because she was wondering what's going on. I thought she was calling the police on me, but she was calling for medical help. She was calling an ambulance. I ended up getting mad and freaking out. I pushed her down trying to keep her away from Bodhi in my drunken stupor, thinking she was trying to take my kid from me, just being a complete belligerent asshole. And why? Because I just had to get drunk that day. I just had to do it. Not only did I almost kill my son, but then I put my hands on my the love of my life, pushed her around like she's somebody I don't care about, treated her like absolute garbage, abused her, and just acted so out of character that I deserved to be where I was. I was 100% where I belonged sitting in that jail cell. So thinking about what had gotten me to that place, I realized it was multiple things, but there was one resounding thing that kept coming back to me, and that was the fact that I was drunk as shit. And I had no reason to get drunk like that other than I just wanted to. And it just clued me into the fact that even though I had had a couple weeks of sobriety up to that point, which is probably even more of a reason why I got so drunk, I was drinking like I used to, but had two weeks of sobriety under my belt from just, you know, trying to be responsible. And so I went back to drinking as much as I used to and just got obliterated. But I literally could have killed my son and I could I could have killed Kim, too. I could have hurt her so badly that she didn't make it either. Like, I, I was being a belligerent, drunken piece of shit. And if I didn't choose to get sober after that, then what would I choose to get sober over? I knew if I didn't get sober after that, I was going to lose my family. And I wasn't. That's not what I wanted at all. So I had to face the choice of do I choose alcohol or do I choose my family, my son, my life, everything I want and work, have worked so hard to build up? Hmm. Tough decision, huh? I gave that shit up so quick. Not only that, but then the state of Colorado was on my ass and made me give it up which actually helped. The The few days I spent in jail allowed me to detox. I came out with a new perspective, wasn't able to talk to Kim or see Bodhi for a good chunk of time, was able to just focus on myself and my sobriety, wasn't able to go back to work, was living with my mom. And so I would say I hit an official rock bottom. And that's why I'm here today talking to you because I don't want you, if you're listening to this and you're struggling or if you have a friend or a loved one that you know that is struggling, I don't want them to hit the same fucking rock bottom that I hit and have to learn the hard way. I want to give you some signs and symptoms that I noticed being an alcoholic, going down my spiral, slowly, slowly falling into this alcoholic addiction. I want to share some of my stories so that hopefully if you align with any of it, you can catch yourself before you fall too far like I did. I don't want anybody to get hurt. I don't want anybody to struggle. I don't want anybody to go to jail or to possibly hurt or lose anybody over an addiction issue. It's fully preventable, and I know that you're capable of choosing life and sobering up and being disciplined enough to stay sober. It just takes a good chunk of work in the, in the front end 
and then just some maintenance work through the tail end. And now I'm in that stage of just maintaining my sobriety. I'm feeling great about it. I'm ready to help other people. I'm, I'm on the other side now where I'm preaching about sobriety. I think it's the best thing that's happened to me. It's the best choice I've made for myself. It is the most successful thing I've done in my life. And that's not to say I haven't done other successful things. It's just I wouldn't even be here talking to you today if I hadn't chosen to get sober. So if that's you, if you know somebody, hit me up, comment below. I don't care. I'm always down to talk to people about sober stuff. And I'm always down to share my story and uh, see how I can help other people in recovery or if they're struggling in addiction. Uh, one thing I've heard in my recovery groups, choose your hard. Struggling with addictions is hard. Being sober is hard. Living a life is hard. But you can choose your hard. You don't have to choose being addicted to something. If, you're gonna, if it's going to be hard already, you might as well have something that's going to reap multiple benefits as opposed to something that's just going to continue taking from you until you have nothing left to give. So are you an alcoholic? I say it's still up to you. But hopefully this gives you a little bit more insight as to whether or not you think that you do struggle with an addic addiction. But hopefully this video helped. Uh, if there's other content you guys want me to talk about or if there's other questions you have, feel free to comment below. I'm always, like I said, down to answer anything. And I'm always looking for good topics of stuff to talk about. The last thing I wanted to say is that sobriety can be really scary. It can be very scary to think about living life without your, your crutch, your safety blanket, which is usually your substance of choice, your alcohol, your drugs, whatever. It can be very scary to think about living life without those things and embarking on a life that is completely different than what you're embarking on now. But the one thing I can say to you is that it gets less scary over time. And the only thing that's scary about it is the unknown. You don't know what to expect. What's familiar is always going to be more comfortable than what's unfamiliar, what's mysterious and unknown. So don't let it scare you. Don't let it intimidate you. Don't let the fact that you may not think you can live without that substance or that drink deter you from trying to live without that substance or drink because you can. You can do it. You don't need it. You will be a much happier, healthier role model when you do decide to quit drinking or drugging or doing whatever your maladaptive behavior is. And just know that if you are an alcoholic, don't be ashamed. Don't feel guilty. There's a lot of us out here. There's a whole massive community out here of people just like you who love alcohol just a little too much that they had to give it up. It's got a bad stigma. It's got a negative connotation, and it's something I'm going to talk about further in another video. But I think just uh, having more people choose sobriety, having more people um, be role models in sobriety and having more people talk about it and just be open about it and share their experiences and uh, be willing to help others with their journey. I think that'll do amazing things for changing the stereotype and the beliefs around that are centered around alcoholism and getting sober and sober people. We're not lame. We're fun. Okay. We're cool. We still know how to have a good time. You can still invite us to go do stuff. We just don't drink. That's all. We just don't need alcohol to have the same fun that everybody else has. So if you know anybody or if you're trying to get sober, hit me up. But until next time, later, Sobers.